the moon. Artemis 2 and 3 projects. Artemis 2 is getting pretty close to launch time. Artemis 3, there's some scheduling concerns on that one. Artemis 2, the one where it's just a 10-day trip around the moon, not landing on the moon, just going on a trip around it. Using the SLS rocket, that's the one on the top left there. The Orion capsule is on the top right, which includes a service module that's put together by the Europeans. It has a crew of four, and it's what's called a free return trajectory. We're not going to go into the details of this. We'll probably should save that for when the mission actually occurs. But fundamentally, they shoot out to the moon, and even if something goes wrong, they're going to come back to Earth anyway, in Earth orbit. It's sort of a safety kind of a thing. That's coming in February, as early as February, maybe as late as April. The biggest single concern is really the heat shield on Orion. You know, you're coming back from the moon, you're coming pretty fast, much faster than just the, the normal low Earth orbit stuff that, for instance, that SpaceX is struggling with right now. And they had a lot of heat damage in the Artemis 1. And it turns out they're not changing it. It's too much trouble, you know, too expensive, I guess, to change it and it takes too much time. Instead, they just said they're going to change their orbit. They're not going to be as aggressive as they were before. So regarding the Orion um, spacecraft's heat yeah. shield, so do they have like a new one ready for the next Artemis? I think the answer is no. But they're not going to reuse the one that's already destroyed, right? Oh, no. No, no. no. Okay. There's no chance of that. Okay. But, well, we're talking about a new design. I mean, th yeah, the one they're going with is not the one that was on the first one. It's new, but it was already built. Like, and it was already built exactly the same as the first one. Okay. But they have time. You know, for the yeah. third mission, they have time mm -hmm. to do it. I'd be worried about that. Yeah, I would too. Since the heat shield failed on the yeah. first one. Well, it didn't fail, actually. It just looked bad. It just skip ahead. I got pictures of that. We showed this, actually, back when this stuff came out. There was an Inspector General report on this. And this is what it looked like, huge gaping holes in it. And they figured they finally figured out the mechanism of essentially high temperature changes, gases coming out and taking pieces of the shield with it. And that's why their conclusion was they think they can just not have quite so much heat. They just spend more time in the atmosphere slowing down. I don't know the details of that orbit, but it's better. The plan, though, is for Artemis III to have an upgraded one. And so that becomes a schedule risk. Okay, Artemis III. To back up, Artemis II is just sending astronauts around the moon. You know, one of the early Apollo missions was like that as well. Three is a lander, and that's the one that's much more complicated. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. We'll probably have to do it again in a couple of years. Basically, you have a bunch of starships going up, and one of them will become a fuel depot, essentially. And it'll be refilled by a whole bunch of flights, number unknown, at least eight, probably 10, maybe, maybe more than that. Enough fuel for the final actual starship to go up there that's going to carry the astronauts all the way to the moon. But they go up there, they get filled up, then they go and they loiter in a lunar orbit waiting for the astronauts, which are going up on the SLS rocket, on the Orion capsule, kind of in the middle there. But that thing doesn't have any way to land on the moon. The HLS human landing system, its purpose is to actually get the astronauts down to the moon and back up. Then they transfer back to the Orion capsule. It comes back to Earth. It's a long, complicated process. Anyway, there are schedule concerns on this. And one of them is spacesuits. You know, the Axiom right here in Houston, there's been concerns. Periodically, surface really have new ones in time. The second one we talked about is the Orion heat shields. You know, that's still a concern, obviously. They have to solve the problem and you know, come up with something better than what they have. Periodically, they've had valve problems with the life support systems on that. That one I don't think is considered as big a worry. But there's been a lot more noise lately about the Starship portion that it won't be ready in time. In particular, there was a safety advisory panel that was convened. And they just said, well, you know, there's been a lot of delays in testing. They blew up more than they wanted to. And really, even to test basic parts of this program, like doing the propellant transfer, getting all those starships up there, transferring propellant to the one that's finally going to go onto the moon. We haven't even proven it yet. But to do that, you need the version 3 of Starship. Bigger, it has more powerful engines. It actually is the one that would do this. Version 2 couldn't have done it. So that caused some delays in that, and that's a key milestone on the way to get there. And there's some concern that SpaceX actually has its commercial needs much more at the top of the priority list than even this. So some concern about that. They're using words like years late. That could be an exaggeration, but it shows you that there is at least quite a bit of concern about this. On the other hand, even in the same documents where they said all this, they also said, and by the way, that we don't really have any other choice because nobody else except SpaceX has this kind of experience. It's called unprecedented. They know how to do so much more than everybody else, that even if they're delayed, it's still the best choice.
Besides that safety advisory panel, there was also some former NASA administrators, like Bridenstine in particular, have expressed the same concerns. There has been some talk of speeding up Blue Origin's work, because they are the second contender for doing deliveries of things to the moon. Their first one is cargo, and then the second one would be the one may be capable of handling humans. It doesn't seem that likely. It's a long shot, but it is the plan B. Okay. Other space-related videos or slide presentations by me are available at the link shown here. That includes a list of videos at my YouTube channel, so you can view them or subscribe for notifications about future videos. These presentations are mostly made as part of the meetings of National Space Society's North Houston chapter, and the link to that is shown. Topics like these are presented as part of a monthly news segment, and there are also lots of other interesting speakers and open discussions. You can attend in person or online via Zoom. Come join us.